Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. Today we are going to make these really cute little haunted house um, houses. You can put treats and goodies inside of them and they're super cute. Okay, so I'm using the Home Sweet Home Framelits from Stampin' Up! And I have the little stamp set here that goes with them, but we're actually not using the stamp set at all today. I just used the framelits to create these. If you hear a bunch of little clicking clacking in the background, those are my puppies running around, just so you know what that noise is. Um, so I, I held up this Sharpie just so you could kind of see the size of this box. It's really t tiny. And that one I created using the um, Halloween Nights designer series paper. And then the one we're going to make today is the Frankenstein box. So I have two pieces of old olive cardstock that I've cut the framelits out of. And I'm going to share tips with you throughout this video on things to not do and to do um, for these framelits. So um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I shared with you is that you do not want to use the precision plate to cut these framelits out. It cuts through the score lines that you see me folding right here. The precision plate has actually too much pressure and it will cut through those score lines and cause um, your box not to be able to be put together. So I found that out the hard way. Pretty much everything I'm sharing with you I found out the hard way. So I just took notes as I did them um, or as I found out. You also want to use tear and tape adhesive or fast fuse adhesive when you're adhering the box all together because you need a really strong adhesive to hold the box together. And even with the strong adhesive, um, if you don't get it all the way to the corners, the box can start to pull out or pull away from each other. So just bear in mind that you want to make sure you get adhesive all the way down each tab and that you want to use a really strong adhesive when you're putting this box together. So this video was supposed to be up on my blog yesterday, Thursday. I'm actually recording this video for you um, at nine o'clock at night on Thursday night so that it can be up on my blog Friday for you. And I just want to share with you the little story as to why. But um, first I'm just showing you here, this is how you can cut out the little door. This one doesn't need a door because I'm going to have a different opening for it, but I just wanted to show you that that was how you cut out the little door. There's a little framelit for that. And I have a tip for you on the door. One edge of the door has a hinge, so it doesn't cut all the way through, it just scores. Make sure you take a black Sharpie marker and mark the hinged side of the door. That way when you get it out to cut these doors out of this um, box, you don't accidentally cut it the wrong way and have a door that opens backwards. I did that and so don't do that. Okay, so I am using basic black cardstock to create the top of this box. And you can see I have cut out just the top of the box and then I'm trimming away the tabs. And that's because I just want to cover the top of the box with black to make it look like it has black hair. Um, and so the only way to do that really is to just cut out the box and then cut away the tab pieces. So I'm sorry I'm a little off camera here doing that. Okay, so the story goes that on Monday of this week, my daughter got a huge splinter in her foot. Huge. From plywood. And... Um, Monday night when we got home we got half of it out and we couldn't get the rest of it out so we called actually called the doctor and said you know what do we do about this he said just let it fester and it should be able to come out okay great so that's what we did so Tuesday the poor little thing went to school Wednesday she went to school both days limping on her foot because um, it was so tender so when she got home from school on Wednesday I looked at her foot and I saw that the little hole where the um, first part of the splinter came out was closing up and the rest of the splinter was still in there and it was getting very red and so I started to get concerned and I asked my husband to come look at it and I said I think we need to take her to the doctor what do you think he said yeah I think so I think it needs to come out it's getting infected and there was no way we could get to it it was really really deep so I called and made an appointment and they were able to get us right in, which was awesome. Okay, so real quick, pausing the story to tell you what I'm doing here. 
Um, I'm peeling, I'm putting tear and tape adhesive all across the top of the box because I'm going to add all those black pieces to the top of the box. So that's all I'm doing here is I'm adding it and then I'm going to peel away the release paper and add the black pieces that I've trimmed out of the black, basic black cardstock. Okay, so we went to the doctor. The pediatrician put a little bit of numbing cream and tried to get the splinter out and he couldn't get it out. So he said, if I were you, I would go to the ER because they can give her a little bit of stuff to kind of calm her down. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry about that. They can give her a little bit of stuff to calm her down and relax her. And then they're going to be able to um, take it out. And I said, okay. So we drove another half hour to the emergency room. And by this time it was like five o'clock. So by the time we got to the emergency room, it was about 545 in the evening. And we got there and um, they got us all checked in and everything. And they ended up calling a podiatrist surgeon to come remove the splinter because it was so deep. They had to lance where the splinter was and then dig it out of there. And it was horrible. It was like I was in a movie. That's how I felt. Um, so yeah, that was my, um, evening last night. We got home about nine 30 last night and well, yeah, last night, cause you're going to be watching this on Friday. <laughs> and by that time it was just simply too late for me to get everything finished. Plus I was emotionally drained. I don't know if any of you have ever had to watch your child go through something really painful, but it's horrible. I know plenty of you have, um, but it's horrible. And she cried a lot and screamed. I mean, they had to come shut the door to our room because she was so loud and it was awful. So it's something I'd never want to experience again. So that's why I didn't have a video up for you yesterday. <laughs> and, um, you're just getting this today. And you probably didn't need to know all of that, but hey, I am a sharer. I like to share. So I thought I would share my little story with you guys and uh, keep it real so that you know what's going on with my life and why sometimes I don't have stuff up on my YouTube channel or my blog and um, when I do on a regular basis. Okay, so to close this little box up, I am going to add tear and tape adhesive to the bottom. And normally I would have cut out a lot of the stuff that you've been watching here. Um, I would have edited it out of the video. The reason I didn't is because I wanted you to see how long it actually takes to put this box together in real life. So, um, or real time, I guess I should say. So you can see I about got it all put together and we're about eight minutes into this video. And so it really doesn't take very long. Of course, that didn't include cutting it, but that takes no time at all. So these boxes go together super fast. So for the top of the box, I want to show you this really cute closure idea. This is another tip. If you don't want to do a window or a door on your box for some reason, like I did here with the Frankenstein, you can um, put tear and tape adhesive on two sides on the same side of one of the sides of the roof and then you'll close that down and then I'm going to show you how to tuck the other side in so that um, it will open and close from the top and then that's how people can get their goodies out and you could even put like a little tag a pool tag or something like that so that somebody would know how to open it so I'm going to close this one side down and then you see that little flap that's sticking up there um, right next to my finger I'm going to tuck that little piece underneath the two little flaps that are down at the bottom. I don't know how to explain that, but it's like they, it holds the little flap in, in place. So I'm going to show you this again. Okay. So you can see that little flap is tucked down underneath the two sides. And then this piece will push down into there. It's almost like you're making a little pocket for it and it closes perfectly. And then that way you can just open and close it from there and you can have a little treat on the inside. Okay, these are the shingles from um, this the framelit set, and I cut them out in black, 
and I'm just going to adhere them down to the front of the box. Here's a tip for you. If you're doing a shingled roof, like I did on the other box, you want to alternate the shingles. So you would lay one shingle down in this direction, then you would flip over the next shingle so that it's going in the opposite direction. That way all of your shingles don't um, stack up on each other and stay in the same pattern. It's like you would have alternating, an alternating pattern for your shingles, if that makes sense. So now I'm adding the eyes. I punched these out of the half inch circle punch in Whisper White cardstock. And then um, I have, there's some little bitty circles that cut out of one of the framelits in the set, the die set that I have here, the framelit set. And so I used those little bitty circles for the center of Frankenstein's eyes. Then I use the half inch circle punch again to punch one old olive punch and then cut it in half to create his eyelids. So that gives him kind of those lazy droopy eyes. And then I just took a Sharpie to draw on his nose and mouth. So I'll show you that here in a second. So one thing I want to mention, first of all, I want to tell everybody, cause I'd really kind of wrap up that story for you. My daughter is fine. She's doing great. Her foot feels a hundred times better. It's not infected anymore. We're putting ointment on it. She's doing amazing for just having all that done last night. So um, she's doing really, really good. Or I should say Wednesday night. Okay, so the other thing I want to tell you is Stampin' Up! has all these special offers going on for the month of September. Well, actually till September 21st. Um, and so every week there are putting up a different special offer. I have linked to the special offers for this week in the description below the video. I've also linked to it over on my blog. So if you're interested in seeing what those special offers are, they're like 25% off on some of the framelit sets and punches. Make sure you visit um, that link in the description below. Okay, this wraps up my fun haunted house boxes. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.